Hey guys, welcome to Verse of the Day vlog and podcast. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube or on iTunes or Podbean or wherever you're listening from. I really appreciate it. Uh, those who are watching, you can also listen on heinzwinkler.com forward slash podcast. And those who are listening, you can watch on my Heinz Winkler Music YouTube channel. Thanks so much. This is a place where we take the version app, Verse of the Day, and we read it, we look at it in context and and chat a bit about it. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you also for subscribing, for sharing, and for, for commenting. I, I really appreciate it. It's great to, to hear from you. It's great to see how the community is starting to grow. Thanks so much for, uh, for being part of it. I appreciate it. Today's verse, being the 20th of December, 2018, is, you know, Christmas is drawing close. So I think we'll start seeing more of these verses for the next couple of days. But today's verse comes from Matthew 1, verse 21, and it says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I'm going to read it again. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Awesome. And if we look at it in context, it is the angel appearing to Joseph. And let's go up to verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which has conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. A verse of the day again, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Powerful, powerful verse. Can you just imagine for a moment being Joseph? Uh, in, in In another epistle we we read that that we read more about the visitation that Mary experienced and then when she had to tell the story to Joseph Joseph hearing this for the first time it must have been overwhelming it must have been hard to understand and immediately the knowing what the culture is knowing what the Word of God says about a woman being pregnant out of wedlock it must have been a really difficult decision to make And Joseph was confronted with fear of man. He was confronted with, you know, what what does he do with this story? Mary is with child. She's telling him it's by the Holy Spirit. The angel appeared to her and explained it to her. So for her, it's very real. But Joseph is getting hearsay. He's getting what she's telling him. And this is something that's never happened before. An immaculate conception is something that's never happened before the the prophets the messengers of God have been quiet in the in the in in, with within the Israelite history for about 400 years the gap between Malachi and and the stories that happened in Matthew is about 400 years and so Joseph is hearing this in in just the flow of normal life like this is a a bomb that gets dropped in his life he loves her, he wants to marry her, they're already betrothed, and then she drops a bomb. How hectic is that? And, and I've seen this in my life, not in this way obviously, but in many ways where God gives us a, a thing, He brings something across our path that doesn't make sense in the natural. And our senses are bombarded with that which we are confronted with, by which we can see, taste, feel, hear, all our physical senses are like seeing, feeling and tasting 
what is happening and it's it's too much you know or it based on what we are sensing with our five senses we want to make decisions but then deep down in the spirit we also have a sense that God is telling us something that may seem contrary to what we are experiencing with our physical senses and now we have a decision to make I mean how amazing must it have been for Joseph to be visited by an angel he was about to divorce Mary quietly to protect himself and to protect her name that was his plan the Lord obviously knew about this plan sent an angel to speak to Joseph to confirm the word that he's given to Mary just in that what I love about that is I see how God works with married couples that if a massive important decision is being you know is on the table he will confirm it with both the husband and the wife so the same word that Mary got is the word that Joseph got to confirm that this is an immaculate conception it is from the Holy Spirit and she is the one that has been prophesied about it must have been difficult to believe that it must have been difficult to go wow we are the chosen ones and and I was just recently at a church in, in Witbank where the guy also spoke on this he preached on this so, so powerfully and 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 he just spoke of how Joseph um, must have been overwhelmed by the idea of I'm gonna be the earthly father of Jesus <laughs> the earthly father of one of the one of the Godheads I mean it's just overwhelming you know and but that is the circumstances that I'm looking at within the context to think of what is this person confronted with and then if we look at this verse in isolation and and just hear how important Jesus's role is why did he come to the earth and this is the thing that I believe as we enter Christmas time as we enter this time of remembering that Jesus was born that we need to always keep in the front of our minds is the reason why obviously it's not about presents obviously it's not about Santa Claus um, it is about remembering that our Lord Jesus was born I know that there's a lot of controversy within Christian circles about whether Christmas should be celebrated at all uh, that you know it's it's a holiday that was made to fit with a pagan holiday um, that it was probably not the time that Jesus was born there's all these issues that come up every year and some people are so they feel so zealous about it that they actually spoil Christmas for everyone else or they just you know they don't allow their kids to have fun with it or whatever the case might be I think you know if you have a conviction about something and it's from God that's great but my sense about the whole thing is that you know to celebrate the fact that Jesus was born is a good thing to remember that he was born and the reason why he was born and given to us by God the Father is a good thing to celebrate and to remember every year the bad thing is if we obviously get caught up in the commercial side of things and it becomes about that the bad thing is if we don't raise our kids to to know what it is really about and if we don't use it as an opportunity to reach people for Jesus because that's the reason he came is to seek and save the lost we see here he's the savior of his people in this context and with obviously with the um, the, the foregoing prophetic words Joseph being a Jew hearing this he's like the, the people that the angel is speaking of is the Jewish people the Israelites the people of God we know that through the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and through what his disciples did in the beginning and him showing Peter Paul that this good news this heritage is not just for the Jew but also for the Gentile we know that when he says his people he means all believers in Jesus Christ who have been made righteous by grace through faith and that is the good news about Jesus coming to earth that he came to save his people that's us he came to save us and it says further if we go further on past the verse of the day he shall be called Emmanuel God with us and if if 
If there's anything we should take away from today's verse, it is that Jesus came to save. He came to help us. He came to free us of our earthly bondages where we were born into sin, into these earthly vessels that are stuck on what went wrong in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. He came so we can be free of that, free of sin, free of death, eternal death, and walk with Jesus on earth, already bringing heaven to earth, already experiencing something of eternity in this life, sharing this good news about Jesus who saved us with everyone around us, and, and, and spreading the word that He is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel, God with us. So you are never alone. In Christmas time, many people feel alone. I want to tell you today that you are not alone. The one that made you, the one that loves you, He is with you because that is His name. He is God with you. And Jesus came to save you, save everybody. And through Him, we have access to eternal life. We have access to a life of authority and power in this life. Through Him, we can reign in life as kings and queens, sons and daughters of the living God. That is what Jesus came to do. And that is what we're going to celebrate in this time of the year. I hope you had a wonderful time with me in the Word. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, may God bless you in this day. I didn't pray in the beginning, so let us pray now. Lord Jesus, thank you for this Word. Thank you for this powerful Word confirming that you are the Son of God who came to earth to die for our sins, to deliver us from evil, and to give us eternal life through your death and, and resurrection. We, we praise you for that. We thank you for that. And we ask you, Lord, that today we will have a deeper understanding and revelation of what it means that you came to save us, what it means that you are God, Emmanuel. You are with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you that we can know we are never alone. Even though there's no one physically near us, you are always with us. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. We praise you. We honor you. Help us to, to, to tell other people about that, to to live that out in our lives and to celebrate this Christmas time with that in the forefront of our minds. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you so much. Remember to subscribe and to share and to comment. Uh, I really appreciate your help and you being part of this community. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.